Welcome to this special presentation of Adamus Saint-Germain. As we all remember, Adamus made it very clear. It started in February 2015. He's been reinforcing it, specifically in May 2015, that he was here to take a measure. And that in February 2016, he would decide how he would continue or not continue with Chambra, with all of us, based on how we managed realizing on our path to enlightenment. So here is that promised message. Jeff, right now, is getting ready to bring in Adamus and share that message. We're here in the Crimson Circle Studio in Louisville, Colorado, awaiting, anxiously awaiting Adamus Saint-Germain to find out where we are and where we're at. So with that, take a good deep breath. Really feel into the energies of this Adamus presentation. Really feel into you. Where are, where are each of us with our realization to enlightenment? Did you allow it? Can you breathe it? Really let your energy radiate for Adamus. So take the good deep breath. Feel with all that you are. Open into your consciousness and awareness, allowing for this most special presentation. I am that I am, Adamus of St. Germain. Let's take a good deep breath, my dear friends. What a long journey it's been. A journey that stretches back over eons of time, takes us through the times of Atlantis, the temples of Tien, the dream, the dream of embodied enlightenment on Earth. The tragedy of Atlantis, the heartfelt pain that so many of you have had ever since then. The reuniting 2,000 years ago in the time of Yeshua, the planting of Christ's seed consciousness on the planet. The making of agreement to come back in this time, in this lifetime, at this most amazing time on the planet, knowing that this time would be that of consciousness, changing the reality of planet Earth, you choosing to come back for your last lifetime on Earth, for your enlightenment in human form, you choosing to bring consciousness to this planet. Such a long journey it's been, and now you're living in one of the most fast-moving, most challenging, difficult times on the planet, yet the time of the greatest potential, the greatest opportunity, the greatest abundance this planet has ever seen. We're not going to see the likes of Atlantis happen on this planet. We're not going to see the falling of great societies, but we are going to see phenomenal changes over these next 10 to 20 years. We're going to see changes that are brought forth by consciousness, by dreams, by desires, by people like you who have made an intense commitment to themselves for their enlightenment, for their realization in this lifetime. So here we are in the new Crimson Circle. Take a look around, feel around you. This is the new face of Chambra. We had our last great change at the Quantum Leap in the year 2007, where Entities from all around the world and entities from the other realms gathered together to mark and to celebrate a time of quantum leap of consciousness, a time when consciousness 
literally took this planet off of the old linear curve and put it on an exponential curve, a time when the shifts really truly began, the shifts that are right now shaping this planet and what comes next. I say that it's not going to be a repeat of Atlantis. No, if anything, we're either going to see these two Earths that are now in existence, these two different sets of consciousnesses and realities meld together or split apart on a rather permanent basis. It all depends on consciousness, on humans, on what direction humans choose to take. And I know because so many of you are vested and invested into this planet, you certainly want to see these different levels of consciousness meld together for the sake of the planet and humanity, for this thing that you help to create and that you love so dearly. And it may. We'll know in the next few years. Or the two worlds may split apart out of compassion and actually out of a form of respect, so that those who choose to stay in an older consciousness and an older world, who still choose to go through limited human experience, can do exactly that. And those who choose a higher form of consciousness, a new type of Earth, one that's not just limited to physical reality, one that's not just limited to the mind, one where there is true freedom and sovereignty, that is where they'll go. As I've said in some of the other presentations that we've made recently, if that occurs, that shift will occur naturally, seamlessly, gracefully, without collapse, without catastrophe, without this old planet splitting apart. It will just suddenly shift into the new Earth. That's for a later discussion in the years ahead, but what we're here to do today is to discuss the new Crimson Circle. So let's take a deep breath with that as I get ready at my podium. Today I'm probably more Saint Germain than I am actually Adamus. You're used to Adamus. You're used to that aspect of me, of Saint Germain, that comes forward to provoke you, to taunt you at times, to laugh with you, to cry with you, and to share this journey. But today it's a little bit more of the Saint Germain. For those of you who are listening to this, who are touched in some way by it, it's probably because you and I have been together before, in human form on this planet, in lifetimes past, in our mystery schools, in our work together for the spiritual quality of humanity. We probably work together, and that's probably why you're here now. I talked last year on several occasions about staying or leaving, and I'm sure by now you can already feel the answer. I've chosen, I've always chosen to stay, but the real question is, where do we go from here? What do we do, we, me, each one of you, the other entities who are assisting, such as Katumi, where do we go from here? What comes next? I said this was the new Crimson Circle. What does that mean? Let's go over some facts and figures, some information that we've done in our own form of an energetic measurement. There's this thing called Chambra. Chambra. It's a word that was first used about 2,000 years ago. Tobias explained it. It was a group which later turned into the Essenes and to other offshoots of that. It was a group back in the time of Yeshua who called themselves Chambra, the family, the strong family, the family of the rock, the family that was here to plant the Christ Seed Consciousness on Earth. And that's where the term came from. Over the series of centuries after that, many of you went in different directions, some to the mystery schools, some on your own path or journey, but you came back together in this lifetime well over 100,000 on the planet Earth who 
feel an affinity or a connection to this thing called Chambra. Chambra has become its own entity. There is a Chambra entity. And it's with you. It's with all of you each and every day. It's in this website. It's in the staff of the Crimson Circle. It's in all of you. You have created Chambra. All across the planet there are those who tap into this information, because the information is not just me, St. Germain. The information was not, not ever just Tobias, either. It is all of us. And we call that a shoud, Chambra, doing a shoud. It's all of us putting our dreams and our desires, our consciousness and our hopes, putting everything together. And that's what we've created over these years. A shout is no longer just that monthly gathering, that monthly message that we have. A shout now is so much more encompassing. A shout goes into all of the classes, all of the gatherings that you call workshops, all of your cloud classes. A shout is all of your social media. A shout is the essence, the consciousness of Shambra on the planet. It has grown, but as Tobias once told Kaldra, it's never going to be big. Kaldra thought that meant 20, 30, 40 people at the most. What we meant was 100,000, maybe a little bit more. But it was never designed as something for everyone. Because to be what you call Shambra, it means that you had a connection going back to Atlantis, going back to the times of Yeshua, coming into this lifetime. It's not exclusive. Anyone is welcome. But that core connection is still such an integral part of all of you, of all of what you do. So we come here now to discuss what's next. Where do we go from here? What is this new crimson circle. Going forward, the messages are going to be more clear and focused, meaning that we're going to be much more specific and direct. And when I say we, it's you, it's me, it's the Crimson Circle staff. It means we have such a clarity now about this being the lifetime, such a clarity of what we have about consciousness on the planet and such a clarity and a commitment to enlightened realization in this lifetime, not waiting, not pushing it off, not just thinking or dreaming about it, but making that dream into a reality. There will be much more clarity, much more focus all the way around. And as I have said before as Adamus, there is no room in this for those who are simply energy feeding. There's no room for those who are playing spiritual. This is no longer spiritual. This is no longer the New Age. This certainly is not a religion. This is about conscious, embodied enlightenment on this planet. It transcends spiritual because it's not just concepts. It's not just something in the other realms. It's not just a philosophy. It is real. It is living. It is you. It's certainly not the New Age. The New Age indeed did bring about a new consciousness to the planet, starting in the mid-1800s. And it brought a new way of thinking, a new way of freedom to the planet. But we've transcended that. We've transcended some of the accoutrements and the dressings of what has been called the New Age. And I'm sure you can feel the difference between what you and what we are doing here in the Crimson Circle as Chambra that transcends, that goes beyond the New Age. What we're doing here is the absolute allowing of enlightenment. Enlightenment is natural. Enlightenment comes with allowing. Enlightenment is not something that somebody else can give you nor necessarily even teach you. It is your allowing. But as you know, it can be so difficult, so challenging, because 
all of the elements of the physical reality around you can be so seductive, can pull you out of that enlightenment, can pull you right back into the limitations of the human condition. Enlightenment can be so challenging and so difficult because the human is used to perceiving everything through their mind and through their human senses. And in true enlightenment, it is going beyond those senses. Those senses still are intact and are an important part of everyday living. But it goes beyond that into senses that right now are truly beyond description. So I'm simply calling them the master sense. Enlightenment can be difficult because it changes your life. And particularly during those times of changes, which so many of you know so well, in those times of changes, everything can seem to be in chaos. Everything starts to appear to fall apart, even though it's really not. The day-to-day way you perceive life changes. And it can be unsettling to the mind and to the physical senses and to your past and to your beliefs. For one to allow, to trust these changes, to trust that it's simply their choice for enlightenment, is so simple but yet so fearful, excruciating, challenging. You're going to feel the constant pull back to the old ways, to limitations within your senses. You're going to be pulled back to family members, to mass consciousness. You're going to be pulled back to old concepts of how to survive on this planet, how to achieve even a small degree of abundance. So in a way, as simple as it is, it can be very challenging. You can't fight it. You can't make sense of it in the way you generally make sense in your mind. So it's simply about allowing. It is a difficult and oftentimes very, very lonely journey into embodied enlightenment. That's why this thing that you have helped to create, this thing called Chambra, called the Crimson Circle, is so important. It is as has been said so many times, uh, not a club. There's no membership. There's no dues. There's truly no rules or regulations or requirements. It is a gathering place for kindred spirit. It is a place of familiar, because you're generally all on the same journey. It is a place that is familiar because you've been together and shared together before. It is a place where you can come and feel and be in the safe space. It's not so safe out there in your regular human reality, but here you can come for that feeling of being in the safe space, for the feeling of compassion, for the feeling of being understood by others and loved, not just by Shambra who are in physical body, but by Shambra who have crossed over to the other side, by the entities who are working with each and every one of you, and by all of those in the Crimson Council. So you come here. It is an energetic, safe space. It's not a structure. It's not a club or a fraternity or anything like that. It is simply an affinity space, a safe space for each and every one of you. Let's look at some of the statistics, some of the numbers that we're dealing with right now. In the past year, approximately 130,000 people were touched in some way or the other by this energy of the Crimson Circle, whether it was through the shouds, the books, the workshops or classes. And when I say touched, it means not just the ones who heard it or read about it or watched it, because there are many who uh, will come to this space. Uh, they'll take a look. They'll, they'll feel into the energy, and they'll move on. When I say touched, it's those people who felt something, 
who, who were touched by some of the words, some of the energies in here, where it made a difference on their consciousness. That doesn't necessarily mean that they've felt into themselves as Shambhara. It simply means they were touched by it. There is a core group of Shambhara, which I'll get to in a moment, who really help to bring these energies together on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, who come on a regular basis to our monthly gatherings, whether at the exact moment or later on. And this core group of approximately 30,000 humans across the world is here on a regular basis who really feel into and understand and are part of Shambra. Now, indeed, there are many, many more who glean something, who gain something from the information, but this core group of truly dedicated humans about 30,000. Back in my messages last year, I said as Adamus that I'm looking for just five, five humans to realize their enlightenment in this lifetime. It didn't take hundreds or thousands, just a small number. As Adamus, I joked with you about whether to stay or whether to leave. I said, we take a look at it right now as we're doing. Where are we? What's the measurement of energy and consciousness? What do we do going forward? Since that time, there are, there have been 102 of the 30,000 who call themselves Shambra who have crossed over to the other side in a form or state of enlightenment. When they realized, when they allowed their I am, their freedom, they simply left. They came back over. For most of them, it occurred simultaneously, you could say. And the realization, they simply left. For some of them, they stayed for a matter of days or weeks and then chose to come over. Some of them felt they were better in, in better service to Shambra on the other side. Some simply felt at that moment of realization that they had done everything they could on earth. There was no reason to stay. They understood that there would be a usefulness in them staying on the planet as enlightened beings, but they're not required to. They're not being pressured to. And they simply felt it would be easier to go on the other side. There are a few more who are going to be leaving in the matter of the next few weeks. We can feel the energies, we can feel the withdrawal from their physical body and from this reality. They are welcomed here on the other side with open arms, with a loving heart, and with celebration. There's absolutely no dishonor. We are are so welcoming of them when they cross over. They aren't met first by their families or their friends from that past lifetime. They are met by Ascended Masters who honor them, who truly have compassion. And the crossing over for them, indeed, is so graceful and so easy. And shortly after meeting with Ascended Masters, of course, their pets come in to meet them. And sometimes, much later on, perhaps family members. In the time since our last discussion, there are two humans, two who have called themselves Shambra, that are enlightened, that are realized, that have finally allowed it and acknowledged it within themselves in a very real and clear way. There's no doubt about it. It's not because we're acknowledging that or we're measuring that within them. It's simply because they are allowing and claiming it. There will be another one shortly after this message comes forth. So there will be three enlightened masters, Shambra enlightened masters on the planet. 
it's not disappointing whatsoever that there's not five or fifty or a thousand. And it doesn't matter, by the way, where these three live, how old they are or who they are. At the appropriate time, they'll come forth. But uh, in true humbleness and true modesty, they're not going to be beating their chest. They're not going to be putting it out on social media or anything like that. They're just going to show up. There's going to be such a knowingness that they won't even have to speak a word. So the fact is that there are not five. It's not disappointing. And it's certainly not enough to say that we, myself, my esteemed uh, fellow Ascended Masters, are not going to stay because there is a, what we'd call a mass, what we'd call the large energetic portion of Chambra, who are, I would say, in their 11th hour and 59th minute. They are so close to their realization. This group numbers approximately 6,500. That is not an exact number, but it's close enough. About 6,500 of those who call themselves Chambra are in the eve of their enlightenment, almost there. Just a few more breaths, just a few more allowings, just a few more releasings, and they're there. Of those, and of reading all the energies of working with the other Ascended Masters, to take a look at how many would stay on Earth as embodied Masters, we roughly calculate at least 5,000 upwards to 5,500. That would mean approximately 1,000 to 1,500 would choose to come over to our side to the other realms, to leave the physical body. And again, there's no shame. There's no dishonor whatsoever. There is no judgment whatsoever. There is as much honor as leaving the physical realms in enlightenment and coming to our side as there is in staying. But that leaves a significant number of humans, 5,000, 5,500, who are at that edge, uh, right on the cusp of allowing their enlightenment. And that is what gives us joy and motivation and desire to continue working with you. There are so many who simply need a breath from their I Am to bring them into embodied enlightenment. It may take months, it may take years, it really doesn't matter. But the fact is that they, that you, have come this far, have endured that many challenges, that many obstacles along the way, and here you are on the eve of your enlightenment. You know who you are. It's nothing that you have to pin on your chest. It's nothing that you have to herald in your social media. You know who you are, and we know who each and every one of you are. It's impressive. The numbers, the potential, the proximity to enlightenment, it is truly, truly impressive. We're here working with you, as I said so long ago, every step of the way. We can't do it for you, nor do we want to. But we're here to assure you, to help you through some of those challenging storms that occur right on the threshold of enlightenment. Then there are a large number of those who call themselves Chambra, another 30,000 or so, who are committed to their enlightenment, but they waver, they wonder, they, they often get highly distracted, they get caught in their own macchio, they get caught in things that keep them what you would call earthbound or uh, lack of consciousness in so many ways. They're not necessarily excuses. They're perhaps valid reasons, but they don't want to uh, do that final level of allowing because perhaps of family members concern what would happen to their family if they allowed and if they indeed did transition over to the other side. There are those who 
are simply not ready to take that final step of allowing because there are things they want to finish and fulfill as humans in their human condition. And there are those who simply are waiting for a few more to go ahead of them to assure them that enlightenment is all that they thought it was. There is a very large number of of the Shambra, and again, you know who you are, and there is no judgment whatsoever. If you choose to wait for a while more to continue experiencing as a human in the human condition, there is absolutely no judgment because sooner or later we know that each and every one of you is going to allow your own sovereignty. This is a very large number, and Sometimes you could say it's a little bit challenging because one moment this group of 30,000 is very, very committed to their enlightenment, very focused on their enlightenment. As you can tell, when they come to the gatherings, when they communicate on the internet, but the next moment they seem to be distracted, going off somewhere else, doing something else, forgetting about their embodied enlightenment, forgetting about their commitment to do it in this lifetime, and sometimes even forgetting about this dream, the Atlantean dream, the dream from the time of Yeshua that brought all of you together. And again, no judgment whatsoever, because we're here, you're here for all of them whenever they're ready, whenever they choose. This is not a race. This is not to see who gets there first, who does it bigger and faster and better. It's simply an experience. But for them, this group of 30,000, at times it's so challenging because they have the knowingness of their enlightenment. They feel that deep inner desire for their realization, but yet they know they are easily distracted. Uh, They focus on things uh, that aren't particularly relevant to the Enlightenment at this time, and then they get very, very frustrated with themselves. This causes somewhat of an energetic imbalance within this thing we call Chambra. This is where so many of our resources in the Crimson Council are devoted to, helping to bring them back into a knowingness, helping the, to illuminate the potentials that are actually surrounding them, helping them to cross over their fears, their concerns, their doubts about themselves. So there's a tremendous amount of our energy, the energy of Shambra on Earth, dealing with this imbalance. But as each and every one of you knows, an imbalance isn't necessarily wrong or bad. It's actually an opportunity to shift energies. Within every imbalance in anything in all of creation, there are potentials. An imbalance, in so many cases, simply creates movement, simply creates new shifts. Then there are a very large number of those who don't necessarily call themselves Shambra. They don't identify strongly with the name. They feel it. They don't uh, push it off, but they don't necessarily identify strongly. They're not sure if they want to be part of a group, which of course this really isn't. They're not sure if they really want this thing called, uh, they call it ascension, we call it embodied enlightenment. They're not really sure, but they feel drawn to it, uh, much like you would say a, a fly is drawn to uh, honey. There's something there. They feel drawn to it because of the energetic qualities of so many of the rest of you, because of the truth in it. But sometimes, sometimes the truth, the clarity of what we're all doing together is a bit too strong for them. They come back on a periodic, sometimes even regular basis, They allow themselves to immerse at a certain level within the consciousness of what all of you have created, but in a way it's harsh for them, it's difficult for them. Uh, They still are feeling very drawn to their other life, their human condition, but yet come back from time to time because they know there is more. 
So what we have within Shambra is a very committed group, not large group at all, but a very, very committed group, 6,500, that are in their 11th hour, 59th minute to enlightenment, to realization, to what we called before uh, the poppers, like kernels of corn just ready to pop. Now the heat so intense, the transformation, the shift so imminent. They're in that kind of borderline zone between one state of being and consciousness and the other. They're somewhere right in the middle. And at this point, they can't go back. You can't go back. Right on that moment, that point of truly embodied realization on this planet. So with all of that said, I also want to say that over these next years, that many, many more will be attracted to the Crimson Circle, to the work that all of you have created. You have created foundation, core material. Everything from the time of Tobias to this moment right now has been truly building a a basis of content, of core material. It's been building it's the history of Shambra. It's your journey. It's the stepping stones that you placed in a path that really was never there before. And in these coming years, many, many more will come this way. Some will come all the way along this path. Others will stop along the way because it's too challenging or there's too many distractions. But what you've done up until now is create that foundation, the core material. Speaking of the core material, when we gather once a month, we together create material uh, information, what you can view on the internet or listen to or read. Once a month we create that together, and that is the foundation of what we do. There are workshops and classes for those who uh, really want to just get together in physical form with kindred spirit. There are classes that we offer that you have helped to create to a degree. On your cloud class, it's a way of reconnecting. It's a way of getting back into the essence of what we're doing. You're learning, you're growing, but you're also contributing to and making this material available. But the point is that there's no requirement that says you have to do these things. There's nothing that says that you're missing out if you don't, because everything, all of the energies are here already in these monthly gatherings that we have that are offered free of free online. Going forward, there's going to be even a more intense focus. There's going to be some, quite a few actually, that leave, but they'll be replaced by others who suddenly are connected to Shambhar and to the Crimson Circle. Some will leave because it is so intense and in a way it is so demanding. And each month when I, as Adamus, gets up here, I'm going to be looking you right in the eyes, saying, Are you ready? Are you being true to yourself? Are you going beyond your machio? I'm going to be saying to you, you're right at the threshold of enlightenment. What is holding you back? And to some, that is going to be so uncomfortable. To some, it's going to be so intense that they'll find excuses, make excuses for leaving. And then most of them will be back at some point or another, because they'll realize that they've been such an integral part in helping to create all of this. Going forward, my dear friends, we're going to be bringing in others into the Crimson Council. The Crimson Council is an angelic group made up of angelic families from all over creation. We're going to be bringing others into this Crimson Council to provide 
an even more dynamic energy balance because of where you're at. Because in, this, in these moments right before enlightenment are truly challenging in so many ways, can really throw a person off. So the Crimson Council is also going to be made up of those enlightened beings who called themselves Shambhara, who came over to our side, because they have such an empathy. And it was not but a few moments ago when they were on Earth in the physical form, so they're going to be joining the Crimson Council on the other side. We're going to be stepping in closer to you, particularly to this core group of 6,500 and even to the additional 30,000 who are so close to their enlightenment. We're going to be stepping in closer than ever before. Closer so that you'll feel our presence. You'll know that you're not alone. Closer also, in a way, at your call, at your request to keep you from getting distracted, to remind you, sometimes in an irritating or provocative way, to remind you of the commitment you've made to yourself for embodied enlightenment. At times you'll feel like you want to push us off, like you'll want to keep us away. But trust me, as my Adamus aspect, I'll be right there with you, looking you straight in the eye and saying, are you ready now? Because you've asked us for this, and that's why we're here. As a group of Shambra, so close, or even somewhat into enlightenment, I'm going to ask that each and every one of you honor each and every one else. I know you feel it in your heart, but sometimes that honor doesn't come through in some of the work that you do with each other, some of your uh, interfaces, communications that you have in your social media, some of the ways that you hold this whole thing called Shambra and the Crimson Circle in terms of understanding that it's all here in service to you, not working against you, not trying to make you do anything you don't want, not trying to uh, be over you in any way. Other Shambra and the Crimson Circle is here in absolute service to you. I'm going to ask you to have compassion, honor, and respect for that what you'll get in return from them, from other Shambra, from the Crimson Circle, is compassion, honor, and respect. These are some of the most difficult times on the planet Earth, from the standpoint of changes that are occurring so fast, so fast that it's hard for the body and the mind to keep up with them. And you're doing embodied enlightenment right in this most difficult, challenging, and fast-changing time. It's also the time of the greatest energies ever seen on the planet, the greatest potentials and opportunities. One might say it's easier to do embodied enlightenment at a time when things aren't moving or changing so fast on the planet, when things are a little bit quieter. But I do remind you, then, there is not nearly as much energy potential available to those who seek their realization, to those who actually allow their realization. I ask you to understand that the Crimson Council and the Crimson Circle are here in service to you. The very reason that they're here is to serve you. I ask you to look at that and feel into it, how the entities on my side of the veil and how the humans on your side of the veil are dedicating and committing themselves to your embodied enlightenment. Some of you may think of the Crimson Circle as a company, as a business, and indeed in many ways it is. But the true reason why they're here is in service to you, and each and every one of them as well is allowing their embodied enlightenment. So if you can imagine for a moment the service that they are giving by doing this work, by providing things like the internet, the monthly shouts, the workshops, the classes, the materials, the support, 
all while they are going through their embodied enlightenment. That is true service. At times it takes its toll on each and every one of them. At times they're not sure whether to turn their face towards their own enlightenment or to turn their face towards you in service. They're doing both. and They're doing a phenomenal job at balancing the two. But at times we see how difficult it is on each and every one of them. I ask that if you're going to be part of this, first and foremost, you come to a very conscious understanding of your own desire for realization. Sometimes you fluctuate with it. Sometimes it's not particularly balanced. Sometimes it turns into an energy game rather than true realization. So first and foremost, take a look at yourself. Feel into yourself. Why did you choose it at some point? Why did you take the path that you have in this lifetime of yours that got you to here? When are you going to truly allow your enlightenment? And there's, no, there's no specifics. You don't have to have a date. It doesn't matter if you do it now or later, but what does it actually mean to you? What is that dream that you had? Why are you here? Sort through all these things, your, your, whether it's your job or your health or anything else. Move beyond that for a moment. Move beyond all the little things that seem to interfere and distract, all the things that hold you down. Come back to your dream, your desire for enlightenment. That will make a shift within this large mass of Chambra, the 6,500, the 30,000, just coming to your own awareness of why you chose to be here in this lifetime. Next, as part of Chambra and the Crimson Circle, support it energetically, energetically, if nothing else. What does that mean? It means to send your love, because this thing that's called Crimson Circle is all of you. This thing called Chambra is all of you. Send your love and support to all Chambra. Send your blessings to the Crimson Circle. But understand that all of you share this dream. All of you share this desire. You came back here together, maybe located all around the planet. But you came back here together at this time for something that is the most precious thing to you, and is the most precious thing to others. Support the Crimson Circle and Chambra, not through criticism, not through harsh words. Support them through love and admiration, because The journey of Chambra and Crimson Circle is your journey also. To be critical, to not to look at the good, but only to look at what you would consider to be the bad, to criticize others, to be cruel to others, is truly only being cruel to yourself. This group has been through so much together, and individually you will realize your sovereignty, individually. It's not about all the group doing it at one time, but yet there is also that entity called Chambra, that consciousness of each and every one of you. There's been the sharing over lifetimes and lifetimes. There's been the times at the mystery schools. There's been times with me as Saint Germain. We share so much with each other. We've gone through so much with each other. And now we come to this moment, right now, this moment on the planet where things are changing so rapidly, this moment of the new Crimson Circle, with such a focus, with such a clarity, and such a graceful form of allowing. So yes, after all these words, after all the anticipation, yes. 
I, the beloved Saint Germain, will continue with each and every one of you, closer than ever, but each and every one of you who is choosing their embodied enlightenment in this lifetime. I'll be joined by others, some whose names will come up from time to time, and some who simply remain anonymous in the background, working with each and every one of you. Let's take a deep breath together as we transition into yet another quantum shift of this planet of Crimson Circle and Chambra. With that, my dear Chambra all across the world, my dear friends in the Crimson Council, those who have left the physical body in their enlightenment re recently. With that, I am the beloved Saint Germain. Thank you.